Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another Bad Movie Review. Today I'd like to talk to you about 2006's Good Girl, Bad Girl. And, oh, this is going to be a treat. Uh, this apparently was a TV movie, um, and they just added all the swearing back in. Or it was a TV movie in Europe. Because it was obviously filmed in Europe. Uh, Germany, I believe, specifically. Well, the plot revolves around Vanessa, a stripper with a long rap sheet of fraud, who's on the run from Gromick, her now former boss and all-around shady bad guy. So where does she go? Well, a convent, of course. That's where her twin sister lives. You know, because she's a nun. So naturally, the sisters end up switching places, and wackiness ensues. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, that doesn't sound too bad. You're wrong. It's awful. This movie is hor horrific on so many levels. <sighs> Alright. Th um, the acting wasn't too bad. I'll, I'll, I'll give the lead actress some credit there. She wasn't too bad. It was just such a horribly written movie. And, the, and it's, the, it's like a weird mishmash of actors. Because not only do you have... The, a guy named Tex, who's supposed to be Texan, but clearly has a European accent. And he's trying to sound like a Texan. It, it was it was actually kind of insulting if you were from Texas. <laughs> um, uh, the guy that played Gromick, uh, I forget his name, I believe it was uh, Mc, Graham McTavish. He's fine. He did a really good job. Uh, he usually does, though. I've seen him in other things. And... Um, he, he always plays really good villains. And he had probably the best dialogue. But the, the script itself was just killing me. Oh my god. They had some of the most horrific dialogue. So awful. <sighs> Alright. Although this movie makes G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra look like Shakespeare in the Park. It isn't. Because uh, G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra was terrible. I'm sorry. We're going to get that out there now. Eventually I'll re review that movie and more... Uh, aggressive angry detail but i want you to think of this movie the title should be kind of giveaway because it's very uninspired good girl bad girl well yeah okay i could have got that from the 30 second description on the back of the box but no this is like sister act meets the first 10 minutes of run lola run with 90% of the nonsense from Home Alone in the last 10 minutes, as envisioned by a middle-aged housewife and the Lifetime Network. I'm not kidding. It had it suddenly turned into Sister Act, and like the first couple minutes were pretty good. It had kind of that like hurried, we have a plot going here. It looked a little cringy, but not too bad. So that's why I give it the run Lola run aspect. And then it gets all sister act in home alone and you're left to wonder what just happened. Now it does have some car chase scenes, which, you know, they tried, they tried, but they're car chase scenes straight out of the eighties. Like you see cars jumping over things as if other cars are ramps and flipping over and it's all in slow motion. Of course, and they dubbed in voices for pedestrians that were nearby, like, look out, Bob! And, yeah, and they jump a ramp and hit a um, semi-truck and go through it, like um, like an old Knight Rider episode. They jump a train. It, it's crazy. Um, it was just so mind-blowingly dated and... I don't know how else to describe it. It was just so horrific. It hit every stereotype from all these other movies, and some of them not good. The car chase scenes were... They made an effort. I'll give them that. that they clearly had a limited budget, but they were still tepid. The detective who's going to retire in one week and has to solve this case... And, you know, be, there's no overtime until this is solved, and everybody's like, Oh, boo! And it was just, it was like somebody, uh, seriously, it was like somebody's middle-aged mom, like picture your mom writing an action movie based off the ones that she sort of half paid attention to. And all the dialogue that ensues is from the Lifetime Network because it is so bad. 
oh, it's horrific. And there's a weird sense of urgency, like, oh, we got to escape. Let's stand around and talk for two minutes. And then we'll suddenly be in a mad rush because we should have been in a rush to begin with. Nobody responds like this. Like, oh my God, the killers are coming. Let's stay and talk for a minute and share our feelings. No, nobody does that. They're like, hey, we're going to die. If you want to talk, you stay here and talk. I'm leaving. I don't want to die. Uh, but the soundtrack wasn't too bad. It, it worked good for an action film. So I'll, I'll give them that. Um, but that's compensated by unnecessary and weirdly placed Bible quotes. Because one's a nun, so she's got to spout Bible stuff all the time. That's ludicrous. If I had a twin sister that was a nun and I'm, you know, a stripper on the run, I would think that since we were raised together, maybe my psychic connection with my identical twin and our mutual understanding would have some semblance of normalcy, but maybe not. I don't know. I just thought the dialogue was just so bad. Uh, if you want to make fun of this, you probably could. Um, but it was just kind of insufferable. It was 95 minutes. It felt like four hours because every time you, you just saw where it was going and you're like, Oh, are they really going to go there. Yeah. They went there. It, it's just hitting every stereotype and cliche from every eighties and nineties movie. The, ah, so painful to watch. The dialogue was awful. The, the sequences were Stolen from other movies, I'm pretty sure. Oh, it was so predictable. Seriously, just go rent Freaky Friday instead. Um, watch that. That was a better movie. There's a certain level of entertainment value, I guess, for people that don't normally like action movies. Um, this really is like an action movie for the Lifetime Network, I think. Uh, you know, that stay-at-home moms would find to be like an action-packed, riveting adventure. People with no imaginations and have nothing better to do, then I would recommend it for them. Otherwise, the rest of you, oh, man, if you like action movies, avoid. Um, if you like good dramas or chase films or any kind of police procedural, yeah, this isn't for you. This is just... Uh, you'll just feel your whole body tensing in agony from all the cringing you're going to be doing. Your your body will go through like little seizures of pain. And you'll, you'll just beg for the movie to end, but it won't because you're not even halfway through yet. And it'll be like, no, you have to sit through more of this. Of course you don't know who has the diamonds. Uh, of course no one could possibly be this dumb. Yes, yes they can. Yes, there will be nuns hitting people armed men that will make G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra's stealing of the Battle of Endor look amazing like some sort of inspired genius move. It will make Action Jackson sound like the dialogue was written by um, Chaucer. It, it, oh no, it, it'll make Sister Act 2 look like a, an Oscar-worthy performance. Oh, no, this was painful. I just finished watching it, seriously, right before I recorded this, like I always do, and, and I'm, I'm going to be haunted by this. Like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be with me all night, and, and it's going to just gnaw at me. Ah, oh, it's, it's so... Oh, I, I, it's like I can almost taste its awfulness. Like, go out and lick your garbage, and that's the the taste version of what your eyes and ears are going to experience with this movie. And I, I generally try and find nice things to say, even about the worst films. And there was some, some decent acting. I'll give him that. The guy played Gromick did a really good job. Um, the lady that played Vanessa and Maria, she is obviously has some talent. This just wasn't the movie for her. And they did a really good job with making it look like, uh, the girls are in the same shot. You know, because it's actually just one actress playing both parts. So they did a really good job with that, but that's not that hard to do. If they can do it with Freaky Friday in the 60s and in the Lindsay Lohan remakes, they could do it in this. All they need is a body double. But they still did a good job of that. 
And I really like the color red that was in Gromick's office. It worked really well and contrasted well with the whites, but I think that was just the luck of the draw. And if I found it really weird that his club was in an industrial park, but, you know, that's okay. Um, the sets looked really good. The, the castle thing they had for the convent, that looked really cool. I'll give them credit for that. Everything else about this movie was horrible. Um, and I feel bad saying that because I know there's people out there that are going to like this and they're called middle-aged housewives. Um, those are the people that are going to like this. They're going to see it on like some kind of lifetimes or we network or whatever's currently available where you live. Those people might like this movie because people that don't like action movies and like the girly aspect of it where they, uh, the girls are ass kicking cool people. Yeah. Maybe they'll find this somehow empowering or some nonsense, but I didn't see it. And as a, as a guy that likes action movies, this fell flat for me on pretty much every level. But I did like that red color in, in that office. I would probably, especially that red door that everybody kept breaking through. I did like that door. I would own that door. I don't know what I'd do with it, but I'd own it. All right, I'm going to wrap it up there because I need to go take some aspirin or something. I have a really serious headache from this film. So uh, be sure to check out some of my other work and uh, I'll catch you folks later.